So welcome to The Hustle with Ben Anderson. Today I've got an esteemed colleague, a guest, a mentor, and a friend, Dave Savage. So before I introduce him, I want to kind of talk about Dave. Dave is a legend and a leader in our industry. He's the founder of Mortgage Coach, which is used by mortgage pros across a whole entire country. He's got 30 years of experience in the mortgage industry. He's an executive, a business leader, a mobile technology pioneer, founder of Smart Reply. He also is a renowned speaker and an educator comparing lenders and LOs to do the best that they possibly can. He's very much been a part of the whole digital mortgage revolution. He's passionate about leveraging technology and reinventing the home buyer's experience. So Dave, welcome to the family. Hey, it's good to be here, man. Thanks for having me, Ben. I know, and, and, and as far as I know, you know, is me being in the tech space for the past probably three or four years, you've been doing it for many, many years. So give us the background, before we go into your career and all the accolades, give us the background on Mortgage Coach. How did Mortgage Coach get started? Wow, so it, it, first of all, it's been a long time. I mean, it's been 20 years since Mortgage Coach was founded and uh, the company name, people don't know this actually, is Wow Tools. So D Mortgage Coach is a DBA huh. of Wow Tools. And, and my, my big epiphany when I went from being, you know, kind of like the loan officer that had a good month, bad month, good month, right. bad month. And I mean, I was a top producer coming out of the gate because I worked hard. And I like your title. I, yeah. I hustled, uh, but 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 my big epiphany is when I got really clear that I could kill it, and working smart was just all about surpassing people's expectations. You know, like if people, and by the way, Wow Tools would just go like, "Wow, like this dude, I like him, I trust him, and I respect him." And by the way, all three of those things had to happen. You know, like how could I consistently get people to go? I like, I trust, and I respect this dude. And and so, you know, my that was my epiphany when, you know, I called it Wow Selling. Um, that was the name of the game. And then that was what gave birth to Mortgage Coach. So talk about, because Mortgage Coach was born from you originating. And did you see like problems with how the process was driven? Because, I mean, hell, 20 years ago, who would have thought about even using a computer for a mortgage? So give us your backdrop on how you originator and what maybe problems you saw that had this idea get born? Where did it all begin? Well, I mean, I mean, first of all, the fact that I leveraged technology as a salesperson um, was really born from from both a gift and what people would call a a challenge. I I am real deal ADD. You know, like I know everybody is ADD now, but I was a kid taking real nice. in school. And and I'm and I'm real deal dyslexic, you know, like spelling was never my gift. And 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 yet I learned early on when it came to selling, like, hey, if I met with someone and remember this is before right. email, and then I wrote them a letter, that that would be a competitive advantage. But by the way, I like even today when I write, I need technology to help me so I don't, you know, look illiterate as wow. when it comes to writing. So I so I adopted technology, you know, back in the DOS days. I I used a CRM because it, you know, it was it was like my superpower. I could meet with someone. I could actually write a letter that didn't have spelling errors, and I could click a button and get it out. So that was that was, you know, early on. I I leveraged technology because of a couple of gifts I had, and then, um, you know, when I kind of figured it out that hey, selling is all about wowing people, surpassing expectations. Uh, I, you know, I discovered a better way to deliver mortgage options. And, you know, that was, that's what became Mortgage Coach. So tell me about that because we have a lot of similarities in maybe some of our deficiencies. I was born and I was told that I had to go to like a special class because I wasn't a very good writer or reader. And so I learned by like watching people. I, you, you and I would have, by, <laughs> by the way, you and I would have been the two kids with that special teacher and that special yeah. class because I was, I was, I was I was doing that gig too. So it's like the hustle comes from like having to actually have your back against the wall and finding better ways to learn. You had to. I mean, that's how I was. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So so I mean, first of all, I I was in that special class when it came to writing and English and this and that, and then I was super advanced when it came yes. to math. Like you know, that was a gift. I mean, I was I was multiple grade levels behind in English. I was multiple grade levels ahead in math. 
And so, I mean, always just kind of winning with numbers was natural. And so, uh, you know, I, I had figured out, called this mortgage coach, total cost analysis thing. And it was like an Excel spreadsheet. That was like my yellow sheet of paper and my HP 12C. And, you know, people would just be like, dude, I like this guy. Cause I've always been straight up yes. and, you know, pretty candid and authentic. And, and, and wow, he's like a wizard, like no other. And, and whoa, he's showing me extreme transparency. Of course, that wasn't right. a word back in the day, transparency. But, but today, when I really think of the magic, and so Mortgage Coach was born when I went from, hey, there's the Dave Savage team that crushes it, and I wanted to build a company, and I wanted to be able to scale so that like not everybody's going to use HP 12C and Yellow Sheet the way I did. So I wanted to be able to get like, hey, C players, turn them into B players, B players, turn them into A players, and make it easy for everybody to turn mortgage advice into a competitive advantage. And that's, you know, that's why I created a mortgage coach was, I, I, I had no idea that I was going to be this technology entrepreneur. I just wanted to create a, a better way to present numbers and deliver advice at the point of sale. And if someone would have told you 30 years ago, 35 years ago, that you'd be a tech pioneer, what would you have thought? I would have thought it was pretty cool. You know, I mean, I, I was always wired. Like, I didn't get in the mortgage space to do mortgages. I mean, I always wanted to be an inventor. I always wanted to create things. So um, I would have I would have been right on. Let's do that. It just it just it wasn't a straight line, you know, to get there. So tell us about the actual process of the bill, because I'm very fascinated about, yeah, the sauce tastes so good at the end. But what was the process of actually finding those key ingredients to making Mortgage Coach so special? Because it is a special process and it is something that I'm sure was a lot of hard work behind the scenes. The, the long hours in the office when maybe people told you this wasn't going to work or you may be thinking to yourself, what am I doing? What was that process like? Yeah, well, there were two big things that happened. I mean, there was one. I was a super successful top producer, and I had uh, I had been invited to speak at Sales Master at Todd Duncan's event because I got business from CPAs and financial planners. You know, the whole industry was either realtor only or builder. So everybody that was on stage was like killing it with realtors, killing it with builders. And I was doing, you know, back in the day when fifty million a year was a lot. You know, I, by the way, it still is, yes. but, you know, I was doing 300 loans, you know, a year with my savage team and building a company and getting business from CPAs and clients. So, so without that story and then having the Todd Duncan sales mastery stage, you know, mortgage coach would have never happened. And then, and then, you know, I had this vision on how to turn mortgage coach into a, a product. Now remember, I, I wasn't doing it to sell it on stage, I was doing it to create it for my team. But I, I found my, by the way, I have a partner at Mortgage Coach. We're co-founders with Greg Wexler. Um, he doesn't have my challenges and gifts. I mean, he's like a rocket scientist. Right. I don't even know if he ever got a B in, I don't know if he ever got a B in school, all A's, you know, graduated from SC, you know, went to work for- One of those you know, guys, huh? IDM. Yeah, we're, I mean, you know, so he, he was, I met Greg and he was the product guy that said, oh, I, you know, that thing that you want, I can create it for you. You know, and I, I think his first price was like 20 grand, like, Dave, for 20 grand. And, and again, we didn't call it mortgage coach. We just, you know, this wow tools thing. And, um, and, and I think at 20 grand, I was like, dude, I mean, this is cool. I would use this, but I'm never going to get other loan officers to use this $20,000 thing. And and it's and it's and it, and it wasn't as slick as I wanted. He goes, well, to get what you want, that's gonna be a hundred grand. And I was like, shit. And I'm like, mm. I'm making a lot of money, by the way. I mean, I could have written him a check for a hundred grand, but I was like, you know what? I'm speaking at this sales mastery thing, and I think it was like six or nine months. And I know other loan officers are gonna want this thing. You know, like like this is legit. And I'll tell you what, Greg. I promise you, I'll get you that hundred grand. But I have to write you a check and you know, you know, I'm killing it. So I could write you the check or whether people buy this thing, by the way, it still wasn't mortgage coach. It was wild tools. And, and how about we just, you know, do knuckles agree that I'm going to get you the hundred grand. You're going to, you're going right. to create the next level thing. And then we're going to sell it from stage. I'm going to tell my story, tell them about this. And, 
you know, we'll have mortgage coach, you know, so, so real quick. So we, we did come up with the name of mortgage coach. It was between, cause I own mortgage planner.com and I, 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 long story why I created, why I called it mortgage coach, but we agreed on mortgage coach. And then to make a long story short, you know, I told my story at sales mastery. I, you know, told them, Hey, I've got this thing called mortgage coach at the back of the stage. Um, it was myself, Greg, his wife, my wife, and a high school friend named Sherry Brooks. We were working the, the booth in the back. And as I walked off stage, I think, uh, 117 people followed me and gave me their credit cards for 995. So we, you know, boom, you know, we were in business. It's it's like what's happening now in the in the business that you're you invented something then that was so needed, and now the market is changing again. So we've kind of been building up into the process of how you made the sauce. So tell those who might be on this call and might be seeing you for the first time that don't know what it is. What is Mortgage Coach? Well, when we invented it, it was all the strategic numbers on one piece of paper. It was like. I had found, figured out that, hey, if I, if I sh you know, like average loan officers show rate, fee, and closing costs, transactional. And, and the total cost analysis was, hey, rate, fee, but now let's show a little bit of transparency. Let's show the cost over time. You know, and, 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 and by the way, the trigger, like the scientific thing that was being triggered was that people were trusting you because you were throwing transparency and education beyond the norm. And so when I sold mortgage or when I created it, it was just putting this, you know, I'm going to like you, I'm going to trust you, and I'm going to respect you all on one piece of paper. That was, that was the founding vision to Mortgage Coach. And that's, by the way, that's what everybody bought from stage. You know, there was no email. It was, right. hey, I could use this thing that Dave Savage does, put everything on one paper, and then I can, I can improve my conversion. So um, today you know, it's become an omni-channel world. You know, by the way, omni-channel means, you know, I've got a mobile phone, I've got an iPad. Some people use Android, some people use this. Some people consume content from their desktop. It's like, you know, email, text, Facebook. And so, you know, today, Mortgage Coach has really turned into a, a communication platform so that if you're talking about rates and fees with the family, whether it's a purchase or a refi, whether it's, hey, the home's in escrow and I need a loan or whether it's a, a pre-approval and I've still got a three-month, six-month story, it's a, it's a communication platform so that they can deliver rates and fees, they can stream video, it's interactive, you know, it's this communication platform to deliver, <laughs> you know, to turn mortgage education and mortgage advice into a competitive advantage. So it's really one of the most complex things that a human being will go through, you make simple. And that's buying a home and understanding Boom. their figures. Yeah, you, you said it better than me. That's, that's you know, <laughs> mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think the transparency and education is so valuable because I don't care what real business you're in, whether you're selling cars or you're selling orange juice or you're selling things, to really being transparent to our customer and educate them about the process that leads them to know I can trust you. And I think that's probably why this product is so important as a resource for people like myself and LOs that I'm working with, but really for people that maybe aren't in the business of mortgage that are on this call. The one takeaway I would say so far is that if you want to build something that you can build to last, build it by educating the customer and be transparent about the process. So what would you say are the fundamental kind of core uh uh, milestones of your company? Because I see uh, glass office behind you. I see employees coming in and out. How do you run the business? What, what's behind? Because we as, as LOs all look up to what you do and use your tools, but how do you run your organization? How's your family built? Yeah. So before I answer that, I want to make sure I cover something you just said, because whether you're listening to this or you're a loan officer or a realtor, if, if you have in common the fact that you're local, like, hey, I I am in this local market where I want to win a self-sourced referral-like business, and and it's it's a call it referral-based local advisor. If that's if that's who you're in, I see this big divide happening where you've got low cost. It's all about speed and price. 
by the way, who's that sound like? It sounds like uh, Amazon, you right. know, and or are you this, you know what, you still got to deliver speed and price. But I think that, you know, if it was a stool, the pillars to the stool are advice and personal brand. Like mm. you got to have, you got to have mm. speed, you got to have price, you got to have personal brand and you got to have advice. So, so I would just, I just want to delineate. Those are the, those are the things. And, and that's why I kind of, I like to call mortgage coach personally branded advice experience. If, if you're mm. a loan officer and you're like, you know what? I need a local brand. I need to own something. I need to build my brand. And by the way, I also need to be a badass advisor. Like my advice right. needs to have value. That's th those are the paradigms. So I, I could go on on that. But you know, getting back to your question, um, you know, I mean, obviously we could spend the whole call on that. But uh, I think some things that people probably don't know that how we run the business is that our key metric, while we are a SaaS based business, which you know, software as a service means that we make money, you know, based off of members. So whether it's a big company that buys us for all their loan officers, whether it's individual loan officers that are, you know, work for a company that's not a partner or brokers, you know, we just launched the broker edition. Um, that's where you make money. You pay us a membership fee, just like a gym, you know, uh, $90 a month. You know, if anybody's listening to this and you're not part of a lender that's a partner, you know, go to our website, pay us $90 a month and you, yes. and you got the gym membership. Um, so most, most yes. SaaS companies like us, their number one, their two top metrics are, um, how many members do we have? What is our retention rate? And how much do we charge them? And that is like, you know, and by the way, we, we do measure that stuff and we do obsess over that. But our, our number one metric, the mortgage coach is, is how many families got a total cost analysis? Like, like, Hey, I'm a family getting into debt. Yeah. Mortgage debt, by the way, the, the biggest debt that most families will ever have, you know, um, by the way, most families right. have, you know, more, they, they, they waste more money on debt than they have in the bank when they retire. So it's like debt management's a big deal in terms of, you know, America's financial health and a financial health of the family. So, so like we think we deliver a better way for a family to get into mortgage debt so that they can build wealth with real estate. So, so like our number one metric is how many families looked at a mortgage coach report, like number of TCAs. And, and I would just tell you, you know, coming out of the meltdown, meltdown, it was a lot less than a hundred thousand families that we were impacting a year. And, and coming out of the meltdown, I created this BHAG that 2 million, like if 2 million families a year, you know, clicked on mortgage coach and got a TCA, that's Boom. It. I've created change in America. And by the way, yes, I will do well as a shareholder of Mortgage Coach and a founder of Mortgage Coach. So that's that's our number one metric is how many families get a TCA. And and that's something that I don't think a lot of that's people huge. know that that's that's the most important thing of Mortgage Coach. That's what we celebrate. I, so how I many do you have now to look at TCAs? In 2019. You know, I, I, we're going to be over, over a million this year, uh, Congratulations. In 2018. And I think, you know, the automation that's being driven, the way we are integrated into the industries, LLS, pricing engine, CRM, um, you know, we'll, 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 we'll hit 2 million in 20, in 2019 and for sure by 2020. But I'm, I mean, we're, we're going after it 2019 north of 2 mil. So what are you doing now to hustle as hard? Because obviously your 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 product's everywhere. Um, there's no one that's competitive in this exact space that I know in the market. You're the leader. Every single day you get up and and you hustle. You're interviewing LOs across the country. You're constantly asking questions. You're innovating. You're like adapt or die mentality. So why is that? And how do you go about doing that when you are already the leader in your space? Well, I mean, there's no doubt we're the leader in our space, but the biggest challenge is getting loan officers to change the way they think. Like, like most loan officers, even though they say I'm not transactional, they are. Yes. You know, it's like, you know what, from a compliance perspective, they need to let someone know the cost of the loan and all the, you know, LOSs and compliance engines 
you know, they'll give you a fee worksheet, you know? And so mortgage coach is a step of beyond that. It's like saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to provide a bigger level of transparency. So, so that's why I, you know, call it the hustle. I interview so many people is because I've got to change the way loan officers think. You know, like if I'm going to get them, like using mortgage coach from a data input, like I've got to input data, I've got to do comparisons. That's the easy part. You know, I mean, anybody that flips the switch and says, you know what, mortgage coach is a better way and I'm tired of getting rate shopped and I'm tired of price exceptions and I, I want to improve my conversion. The data input is the easy part. You know, it's it's changing their standard so that they're like, you know what, I've got to give that family more than, you know, rate sheets and fee worksheets. I've got to give them, you know, this total cost analysis. So so that's why I interview so many people is because uh, obviously I'm Mr. Mortgage Coach. If I just did a bunch of videos of me talking at you, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure it would I'd get a result. But if I interview, you know, Baller, someone who's closing over 100 loans a year, someone's closing over 200, someone's closing over 500. And by the way, I, I tell it from, oh, here's someone in Alabama closing 200 loans, right. specializing in this family. Here's someone in Seattle. Right. So I'm, I'm just always looking for different loan officers in different markets that are killing it with Mortgage Coach. And then I'm, you know, I'm telling their stories and strategies in a way that gets loan officers to, to change the way they think and, you know, get on our team. And it's insane that someone, I'm sure anyone that you've talked to that's doing 100 loans a year is probably making how much money would you say, Peter? I'll leave that to other speakers and leaders in the industry. I try to, you know, you guys can all do the math. They're making a lot of money. So you have these guys making a lot of money and you're advising them on fundamental things that are making them more money and they have a hard time adapting to wanting to make more money. You know, I think, I think that's the, the thing is it's the change. It's the process of understanding, look, with some of these fundamental improvements, I could actually double my numbers. I'm making more than most CEOs at Fortune 500 companies make by helping homeowners achieve the American dream. And you're helping these guys who are at that level achieve higher levels of success. You know, so do you ever get in a situation where you're talking to a guy that's already doing very, very well and they're like, yeah, yeah, I don't need that. And how do you handle that objection? Yeah, all the time, you know, I mean, whether it's, you know, someone who has kind of their own Excel spreadsheet that they built a lot, like, I love this thing, right. I know how to use this thing. It, you know, it's got me where I'm at, um, you know, so, so that's a challenge. But I mean, here's the deal. Change is hard. You know, like, 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 I don't care what it is, you know, like everything, like if you have to change anything and I'm not going to use a bunch of analogies, but it's hard, you know, I I guess the the only point I would make is I, I I don't know who wrote this quote and I might butcher it, but I, I believe this, you know, I, I believe that the illiterate, and I think it says the illiterate of the 21st century are not those who can't read and write, which Good for me, uh, right? But me but, too. But 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 those, but those who can't unlearn, learn, and relearn. You know, it's all about changing. I love that. Because let's face it, we live in a world where you know, I mean, change is happening. Whether it's communication platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, whether it's Mortgage Coach, whether it's CRM. I mean, you know, the fact that, you know, text is such a big part of selling and relationship building now. And and by the way, multi-channel communication, like every family is like a, is like a different footprint. Like you talk to one family and it's like, you know what, don't call me, text, text me. And yeah, you can email that to me. Oh, oh, and by the way, my wife likes Facebook messenger. Okay. You know, you talk to one family (laughs) and it's like, I want to come in and meet with you and could you print that out? No, don't text or email me. You know, I mean, every, not only family, but family member wants to be communicated differently and wants you to, you know, use different channels. So as a mortgage pro, by by the way, broadening that as a local referral based advisor, I don't care if you're a CPA, I don't care if you're a realtor, if you live on referrals, and, and and you live on people in your local market, you, you you need to change. You need to change how you advise them and how you communicate with them. And it's hard. It's hard. 
That was important. Please take note. If you're working on referrals, you have to change. The business, no matter what business you're in, is adapting at a rapid pace. What's that law of, of every 100 years, the last 10 years are, are adapting faster than the last 100 years? So when you're dealing with people that are dealing with technology, go ahead. Over the next 10 years, we will see 50 years worth of change. But, but, but by the way, just to put this in a context that everybody can get a grip, if Moore's Law is true, which it is, and I believe it, you get to choose whether you believe it, then that means over the next two years, we're going to see 10 years worth of change. And, and, by, and by the way, what happened 10 years ago? You know, 10 years ago, this hit the market. You know? And so, by the way, think of all wow. the change that's happened over the past 10 years. That's what you're going to see over the next two, two, two years and two. Two. I remember in 2007, I got my first iPhone and it was the first, first iPhone that didn't even have internet touched to it, I don't think. So think about 10 years ago, internet wasn't even really accessible by a phone. So in the next two years, if what you're saying is true, and I also believe in Moore's Law, that the changes that happened in the last decade, we'll see the same amount of changes in the next two years. By 2020, we'll be having this conversation and talking about how now a cell phone is probably so small that you could just talk to it and you could, God knows what, have your car show up. I mean, the possibilities are endless with innovation. And so if you're in a service-oriented field, how are you innovating? How are you changing? If you're in the mortgage business, are you using a mortgage coach so that you can spend more time talking to more people and not having to re-explain how fees work? You're, you're, you're cleaner. It's, it's more presentable. You're a smarter loan officer, and you're able to innovate with tools like mortgage coach. So, Dave. Yeah. And, and for all the – well, I just want to give another, um, I don't know, example. Like if you're a loan officer – Think about in 20, it's 2018 right now. It's, you know, weeks before the end of the year. But I want you to think back to first quarter of this year. You know, was, was Zillow in the mortgage space? No. Was Redfin in the mortgage space? No. Was Keller William in the mortgage space? No. Were you, was the industry talking about um, open door and list pad, realtors, loan officers, uh, by the way, was anybody talking about Amazon getting into the mortgage space right. in Q1 of 2018? And and so, like, literally in six months, not two years, six months, there's like six more channels of communication going after that family. You know, like, they're, you know, do you think rate shopping is going to get harder or easier for right. a family buying a home? And And so, guys, I mean, it's not just two years. Look what's happened in six months. You know, right. right here in 2018, man, it's crazy. And so what are some of the changes? Because you're obviously a pioneer, someone that had thought about technology before tech was even really born in our business. So what other changes do you see happening that if I'm someone that's actually auditing the business and is looking to see where the market's going to go besides just social media, or is it just social media? What things could I look to do now to be ready for the next couple of years? Yeah, so I, you know, it's funny. I had, I had a pint. I, I, he was from, he's British, but Steve Brown, who was the former futurist of Intel, I've interviewed him a few times. You know, check out my interview on our our YouTube channel. Uh, he was a speaker at Master. He was a speaker at uh, Digital Mortgage. But anyway, Sam and I were having a pint, pint, pint this week, and I, nice. I kind of asked nice. him a sim I had him a similar question, and he said, Dave, you know, like I think it will be clear by the end of next year. And by 2020, he's like, you know, and I, I said it earlier, he's like, hey, there's going to be some companies. And he's, he's like, there's not a right or wrong decision. They're going to be focused on price and speed, call it Amazon. And there's going to be some companies and loan officers that are just like, you know, using technology to improve experience. And he goes, he goes like right now, the people in the middle that are just like, yeah, you know, I don't need to use that tack. They're going to, the you know, he said, I don't know how fast they're just going to be completely eliminated. He goes, he, him and I both use this analogy, but they are choosing, like, there's a race happening and there's a route to win. And one route is uphill with the mm -hmm. wind at your face. And one route is downhill with the wind at your back. 
and they are they are absolutely running the race in a way that they have no chance of winning. You know, like and and he, and he in his mind he goes, I don't know if it's gonna be twenty twenty or twenty twenty one, but it will be the reckoning. You know, like like he's like, but he's he's like, you know, like this is he's like twenty nineteen was a big year in your space. He's like twenty nineteen is gonna be. Uh, you know, it's going to be very, very different, and people are going to have to, you know, leverage tech. I I agree, and I think those that can, you know, I mean, all the stats will tell you that there's not less mortgages being written; there's just less people to write mortgages. And so, with the ability of having a cell phone in your hand and being able to broadcast one message that can land on thirty thousand or a million earlobes at one time versus having to go one transaction at a time, just because people don't want to adapt. There are that L that says, no, nah, I'm cool with my spreadsheet still, Dave, don't worry about it. And you're like, okay, well, whether you like it or you don't like it, if every other borrower, like you're at 2 million, is now doing TCAs, they're gonna soon expect you to be using TCAs. And if you are not, what's your excuse for not using it? I think that's the anecdote right there, is if you aren't adapting, you are gonna be forced to explain why you can't adapt and then the customer who's already adapted before you is going to say, I don't want to work with you. Yeah, no, I mean, there's there's no doubt. But I mean, it's like I said, today it's still a competitive advantage. And regardless, well, I do think the predictions are there's going to be less mortgages in 2019 to 2018. I, I would just say, hey, man, you, everybody on this call, you know, and even if, you know, the CEO of Quicken was on this call, I'd say we're all too small to have the market dictate our success. You know, like, right. like, I don't care what the market does. If it's down 20%, there's no reason you guys can't be up 20% uh, because we're just too small to be impacted by macroeconomic issues. You know, it's, it's all about personal execution on a, great, on a winning strategy. I love that. I love everything that you've said. Tell us what's next for your journey. You hit your 2 million, TCAs, and that's a, a feather in the cap. What's the next milestone for, are you opening up another division, hiring, just continue to do the same thing better and better and better. What's next for Dave Savage and your team and mortgage coach on the hustle here? Yeah, no, I mean, first of all, I am, you know, just focused on, you know, blowing up mortgage coach. You know, we've, I think we've got about 34% of the top 1% that, you know, every magazine that comes out, 34% top 1% use mortgage coach. Uh, definitely want to get that over 50%. So it is the, you know, if, if you are a top producer or want to be a top producer, we are the gold standard. Yes. Um, in terms of how you deliver advice and have you learned, um, you know, in terms of getting to a point where, you know, a total cost analysis experience is the expectation. I mean, that, that's it. I'm not really thinking beyond that. Uh, from a professional standpoint, because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not there and there's a lot of work to be done there, you know. Now, on a personal note, you know, my my youngest is a junior in high school. And so I'm starting to, like, think, like, what is life okay. with kids not living in the house look like? And I'm not looking forward to that. But, you know, that's getting close. Staying local for school or, or traveling for college? So my, my son's a, a lacrosse player and he... Uh, just committed to play uh, lacrosse for Syracuse. So, oh wow, uh, he he's he's going to be on the other side of the coast. So uh, we'll be spending some time on the other side. Sign up some uh, LOs in New York, huh? Yeah, right. Why not? Yeah, no, we gotta we gotta build out that marketplace with 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 uh, mortgage pros. Take down Manhattan. I love that. So you're a family guy. You're obviously killing it. Well respected. Um, I really appreciate you spending time with me and my family on the uh, the hustle. How can our team use, because wait a minute, if what you said is right and 34% of the 1% use mortgage coach, and I want to be one of the one percenters, wouldn't I use mortgage coach? Would make sense to me. Absolutely. So how can I sign up right now for me, mortgage man. coach? What's the first step to do? So go to our website, mortgagecoach.com. A lot of demo, or there's a link to buy now. Super simple. Go do one or the other. Um, but I mean, everybody on this call. I mean, we we like I said, I'm trying to evangelize and change the space. Mm. And so we've got a Facebook group called Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind. 
that if you're a mortgage pro and as long as you don't spam or and you're cool, you know, uh, you're welcome. And Love so it. you can go to Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind. And then, um, you know, we've got a YouTube channel. Uh, just go to YouTube, type in Mortgage Coach. And I, uh, I'm working hard to make it the Netflix for mortgage professionals, you know, that whether you're new in the business, whether you're doing 100 loans and you want to go to 200, uh, you know, sign up for our YouTube channel. And uh, the only difference between us and Netflix is you'll make money getting entertained on our videos. <laughs> so you're on YouTube, you're on Facebook, how about Instagram? Yeah, you know, I, I personally am an Instagram nerd and, and and we do have Mortgage Coach. You know, one of the things I try to do with that is show real world shots of Mortgage Coach out there in the wild, cool. helping a family or a realtor. So, so Ben, I would love for you to, you and your team, you guys are so good with photo and media. Yeah. I would love to get some, uh, I'd like to get you guys all over our, uh, our Instagram page, man. All right, Shan, make sure that you, uh, get us on the, uh, the group with Dave and his team on IG today. Cause I, I want to make sure that we're, we're giving the love. Okay. So, uh, it, what's your Instagram name, Dave? Uh, so, um, mortgage coach is the company and D mortgage coach Savage. is the company. And D Savage MC is my personal, you know, and, and if you guys D go Savage check it out, MC. literally, I, I think I, I started, I, I did my first post about three weeks after Instagram started. So I, uh, I'm kind of a nerd about that. So last thing, the number one thing I hear from LOs is, is they all know that they need to be social and be digital, but they're, they're just sort of like intimidated by Instagram and, and Facebook and these things. So what piece of advice would you give someone who might be a little bit insecure, uh, a little bit sh gun shy about doing it, about just advice about just doing it when you have an idea like starting mortgage coach or getting on Instagram because you know it's going to be helpful for your business? What's the advice you give them about just 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 trying it? Well, I, I, there's two, three, there's two big pieces individually and one if you're a branch manager or team leader. Um, personally, it's just get clear on your why. Mm. Like if there's a piece of technology that you, you know, you should adopt, but you haven't adopted it and, and you just keep, you know, missing your own expectation and promises to yourself. I mean, trust me, write down your why, like take some time and write it down, you know, like, and I, and I just know that when I talk to success stories with tech and I ask them why it's like, it's, it's personal and it's compelling. And so I would just write down your why and take the time to write it down, get clear on your why. And, and by the way, if your why gets big enough, personal enough and compelling enough, all the other stuff gets out of the way. And then, and then it's just reps, you know, like with mortgage coach, we always say create 10, like 10 TCAs. Now, like how fast can you do 10 reps? If it was Instagram, how fast can you post, you know, 10 posts, if it's doing video, how fast can you do five videos? You know, it's, it's, it's why and it's reps. And then, and then by the way, if you're on this call and you're a branch manager, regional leader, or, you know, someone that leads a team, you, you need to, you need to package those success stories. Like when you get changed from one of your peeps, don't just forward the email to everybody and go, Oh, FYI. And people got to like read the string. And, oh, okay. There's the success. You know, like package your success stories, promote them. You know, make sure you, 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 you shine a light on it at the next sales meeting. You know, you really do a great job of, you know, sharing the success of the people that you lead. You know, those are my quick hits. Sharing the success of the people that you leave. Mic drop. This is Dave Savage. This is Ben Anderson. Thank you, Ben. I really appreciate it, brother. Thank you, man. Have a good one, brother. Thank you for calling from the hustle. Today, met with Dave Savage, a mortgage modern industry legend. I can't wait to follow what he does next. To follow our story, check us out at benanderson.365 on Instagram and stay tuned for our next honored guest.